All right, 2 Samuel 14, let's call this one Save Me and subtitle it Absalom's Back because after having arranged to kill his brother in the last chapter, his brother Amnon, in response to Amnon raping his sister, this chapter we are going to see Absalom return. However, it's not going to be easy. And so Joab, seeing that there is a distance between David and Absalom, is going to make an effort to bridge the gap. And so he is going to have to find a way to do that delicately understanding that this is a delicate situation. And so what he is going to do is arrange for a woman described in this chapter as a wise woman to approach David with a question uh, that she's simply going to introduce with the words, save me, thus the title of this chapter. But as we're going to see as her story progresses, she is not so much seeking her own salvation as she is seeking to help David give himself a little bit of mercy. And with a story that Joab is given her portraying herself as a widow she is going to tell the king that she had two sons they quarreled and there was no one there to break them up and so one overpowered the other and ended up killing him and now those in her area are seeking out the remaining son to avenge the blood of the son that he killed and so understanding the dilemma that vengeance would leave her with no male heir she poses the question to David, will you save me? And David's response is, of course, under the circumstances. As I heard one preacher say it earlier this week, under the mitigating circumstances, even though the young man might possibly deserve the death penalty, the situation suggests that David was willing to give mercy. And so ultimately what we are going to see is uh, much in the way folks would go into an office and seek the help of a counselor. Sometimes as we were taught in counseling, uh, the issue that you were told might be better described as the presenting issue because until you build trust, people aren't always willing to disclose the true issue, the issue known as the counseling issue. And so that is what we're going to see here as the lady is going to present the story as a presenting issue, but the real issue isn't her dilemma as much as it is David's. And so after she gets an answer from David showing mercy, she's going to pose the question to the king, are you not condemning yourself in not bringing back Absalom? And so ultimately the question is, look, if you're willing to give this level of mercy to a perfect stranger, why not allow the same level of mercy to both your son and to yourself? And so ultimately David, knowing at least a little bit about his general, asks this woman straight out, did Joab put you up to this? To which she replies, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, he calls Joab in. He gets to the point and says, yes, you can bring Absalom back. But he does so under the condition that you don't bring him directly into my presence, which leads to the second half of the story, even if it's not uh, verse by verse half. But it's the turn in the story where Absalom is now back near David, but not really in his presence. And so after about two years of being nearby the king, but not seeing the king, he's going to basically call to Joab and Joab's not going to answer. And so he is going to get kind of irked by the fact that Joab doesn't respond to him. He's going to send some of his servants out to burn Joab's uh, grain. And that's going to get Joab's attention. And Joab is then going to come to ask, why'd you have your servants burn my field? At which point Absalom is going to say, why am I here if I can't actually be in the presence of the king? And so Joab is going to carry that message at which point uh, David is going to complete the reconciliation. However, in Absalom getting irked by being ignored, we're probably going to get an indication of what's ahead, which is this young man is not completely healed and his ego may be in a place where he is going to continue doing questionable things that are inevitably going to lead him back into conflict with David. But more on that in the next chapters. And in the meantime, God's best to you as you go forward in him. God willing, learning the lesson from David to the degree you've done the hard work of forgiving and showing mercy. God bless us all to be able to at least give ourselves the amount of mercy we're willing to extend to others, especially perfect strangers.